So far we've talked about how um, emissions are formed and produced in the, um, in the engine. Um, but in this section I'm going to talk about how um, the emissions uh, are measured and also I'm going to give you a method for be, being able to calculate the air to fuel ratio based on the emission measurements uh, that you might take. Okay, so firstly, the way that um, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are measured is by um, infrared absorption, okay? And the way this works is um, you normally have a test cell in your analyzer and uh, a small, um, or either all or some of a proportion that you know exactly you can measure, as it's sent, a sample is sent through the um, test cell and the light is fired across the cell perpendicularly to it and basically carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide will absorb um, the infrared light that's been um, sent across it so if you've got a detector on the um, the other side then based on the amount of light that gets to the other side you know the concentration because it's a bit in the middle it's obviously absorbed by the carbon monoxide or dioxide so that's how it works it's basically on an infrared absorption and it kind of goes about si saying that you have to use light at the particular absorption spectrum um, for the gas that you're uh, interested in. The NOx is measured um, slightly different. It's used by uh, measuring by um, what's called chemiluminescence. And chemiluminescence is um, the production of light from a chemical reaction. So uh, if you remember a couple of slides ago, I showed you, um, you know, the nice blue flame that you see when you're burning methane and you see it on your gas stove that's chemiluminescence that's what's giving off that blue blue light that you see and essentially um, if you can measure that light to the particular um, wavelength um, for the species which in this case NOx then um, you can measure the intensity of the light is also proportional to the species so the amount of NOx is there so the more NOx that's there the more intense or the higher the light signal is that you'd get from uh, your, your measurement device. Unburned hydrocarbons, um, they're measured by what's called flame ionization detection or FID, FID. And the way that this works is you have you pass your sample um, through a burner and um, as the hydrocarbons go through they're burnt by the burner. And as they're burnt, ions are formed. So the um, chemical reaction I showed you at the start of this lecture, the super things, some of the ions are formed as a result of that. And if you do this com combustion electric field, then the current um, that's um, the current flow in that field corresponds to the amount of carbon that are present. So basically, what you're doing is you're basically counting from the um, the electrical from the current flow. The amount of carbons that come through your burner so you can get the concentration of unburned hydrocarbons. Particulate matter, the final one is, is um, again done differently. This is measured by what's called a condensation particulate counter or CPC. And what happens is because the particulates are um, very small, um, you know, you can't, it's quite hard to measure. So what this um, technique basically relies upon is that you grow the particles large enough and then count them using a laser-based counter. So the way that you grow them is you pass your sample through um, a chamber that's filled with another fluid, typically butanol, and basically that space is completely saturated with butanol. And as the, um, your particulate matter passes through the chamber, um, the butanol condenses on it and basically the particles act as a nucleation site and the butanol condenses on it and they start to grow and you grow them large enough so basically you can count them using a laser based counter so it's quite simple in that respect but obviously um, quite challenging to implement in practice okay so i've talked about how um, we measure them and what i'm going to do now is take you through the method to calculate the air to fuel ratio um, of your mixture if you know some information about the exhaust products. Now don't worry about this equation, it, the, I wouldn't expect you to remember this, but um, up till now this is basically what you've been doing whether you kind of realise it or not. 
So in the last lecture, I was telling you a way to balance a chemical equation. Well, basically, this is just an algebraic way of doing that. I don't suggest you memorise this. I suggest you use the method that I've given you. But basically, this is what's going on. And that that's what was going on for complete combustion, OK, in the top equation there. But as we've said, we don't um, always have complete combustion. We have a super products. So this breaks down now. So what we're saying now is if we've got our hydro hydrocarbon, maybe there's some oxygen in there. If we re react that with our air and we've got some air to fuel ratio, we don't know this. We want to work this out and we get some super products, but we don't know what we can't calculate this out um, uh, beforehand. We need this is what we're measuring. Um, but one basically we can make a few assumptions here. Um, because generally um, the combustion all but carbon dioxide, water, excess oxygen and nitrogen um, are kind of ne tend to be negligible in the exhaust. So um, not to say that it's not harmful, but the concentration of NOx in your exhaust tends to be in ppm um, parts per million, whereas your um, uh, concentration of carbon dioxide and CO possibly are in terms of percentage, so you know they're significantly more. Um, so the way you can basically reduce this down, so by using that we can um, kind of um, assumption, we can actually work out um, the air to fuel ratio from the emissions. And I'll go through this on the next slide. I'm going to um, use an example to illustrate um, what I was talking about on the previous slide. And that is, if you know the composition of the exhaust gases, or if you measure that with um, some equipment, then from that you can determine the AFR of your actual um, mixture in your combustion system. And you can also do the vice versa. Um, if you know your air to fuel ratio that you're putting in, then you can um, predict what the exhaust gas composition is going to be. Um, the former um, is a little more tricky calculating the AFR from the exhaust gas composition. So that's the um, one that I'm going to use an example, but it can be done both ways. So to illustrate this, I'm going to consider the example of um, propane. Um, propane is C3H8 and in one of my previous um, sessions I showed you how to um, balance this equation for stoichiometric conditions. So stoichiometric is complete combustion, um, so all the fuel reacts with the air and you only end up with carbon dioxide and water. So I'm not going to go through this again, um, but if you're unsure of how to do this, um, go and look at the video um, on combustion that's related to this. OK, so first thing you need to do is to balance your equation for stoichiometric combustion. And as I say, that's already been done for us. Now, if we say that um, this propane is combusted with some excess air, then um, we're going to have uh, we're going to have excess oxygen in the exhaust um, and we don't know how much so we're going to use it express algebraically um, so this is what we end up with and I'll just kind of talk through it so we've got our propane and we normally react this with five units of oxygen but we say we've got excess air and we don't know how much so we're going to use a big x um, to symbolize that now the products that we get, the ox, the sorry, the um, carbon monoxide will stay the same because we've got the same amount of carbon over here, so we've got to have the same amount of carbon over here, and the same with the water. We won't have any more water in our products because we've got the same amount of hydrogen over here, so we're going to end up with the same amount of water over here. We will end up with some more nitrogen um, from the air because we're increasing the amount of air and therefore the amount of um, nitrogen, so we're going to end up five x seventy nine over twenty one. And what the remainder is, is we're going to end up with um, some excess oxygen. We've got excess air, OK, so the fuel is completely oxidised, but there's some left over. And the amount that left that's left over is, um, we've got 5x here, so it's 5x minus 1, OK? And um, just as a check, if this was stoichiometric conditions, um, so um, 5, we set x to 1, then as x becomes 1 here, we've got x minus 1, this term, term becomes 0, and um, the oxygen term disappears. Okay, So what we're saying is we're saying that 
um, units of oxygen is used um, in the complete combustion. And the remainder, what we've got left over is x minus 1 times by the 5 we've got over here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to work out um, the, the AFR, um, the air to fuel ratio, if we've got an excess air and we know something about the products. So this is the um, equation from the previous slide. And you'll notice that I've highlighted the, um, the number of moles of the exhaust uh, of the products in red. And the reason for that is it'll become clear as we move down. So these are the number of moles that we have in our exhaust. Now we don't know what that number is yet. We know we've got three carbon dioxide, four water. But we don't know how many nitrogen we've got, but we know what it is algebraically. It's 5x, 79 over 21. And um, the reason I've kind of highlighted this is um, if we want to know, if we know something about the exhaust, for example, if we know the um, concentration of carbon dioxide, then it's the number of moles of carbon dioxide divided by the number of total number of moles of, in the exhaust. And the total number of moles is what I've highlighted in red. Um, now that is what I've shown there. That's for what's called a wet sample. Wet because it includes um, the water. However, typically the exhaust gases um, uh, are measured using a dry sample. In other words, so the water is taken out of the um, of the products. The reason for that is is that the um, water in your measurement sample interferes with the analysis of the gas. Um, so that's why it's removed um, uh, from the ex exhaust products. And let's say you have a dry sample. So therefore, if we have a dry sample and we don't have water in our um, exhaust products, then actually the number of moles that we have is 3 plus Remember, we haven't got the water, so it's 3 plus 5x, 79 over 21, plus 5x, um, 5x minus 1. These are the total number of moles in the exhaust. Now, as I say, if we know something about the percentage of one of the products, and let's say for this example that the um, CO2 is 10% by volume in the exhaust, then the percentage of CO2 is 0.1, we just said that. And what that's equal to is the number of moles of CO2 divided by the moles in the exhaust for a dry sample. So um, the number of moles of CO2 is 3. okay, And the moles in the exhaust for the dry sample is 3, 5x times 79 over 21, and 5x minus 1. So now we can work out, we can solve for x. Because we know this percentage of CO2, we know its relationship to x. We've got one equation, one unknown. So therefore, we can rearrange this and we get x comes out as 1.34. Now, if we plug x back into our equation at the top and um, uh, solve for that, then we've now got this new relationship with our excess air. So you can see that instead of reacting our one mole of um, propane with five um, moles of air, uh, sorry, five moles of oxygen, reacting it with 6.7. And these are the products we have, and we have 1.7 moles of um, oxygen left over. Now, that's not quite the final story. Um, for example, if you were asked to um, find the air to fuel ratio, the gravimetric air to fuel ratio, then you do this in exactly the same way that I showed you last week in the combustion example. So we've got our relationship of propane um, to air. And if we want to find out the air to fuel ratio, then we put those against each other. So we've got our propane and 6.7 moles of oxygen and dissociated nitrogen. Then we just plug in the um, atomic masses. So carbon is 12, hydrogen is 8, um, oxygen is 16 and nitrogen is 14. And if you go through and um, uh, put that all into your calculator, we end up with an air to fuel ratio of 1 to 21. So I just showed you a way of calculating the excess air um, or X in this equation um, from knowing something about the exhaust products. But as I said, um, you can do the same thing the other way around. You can also uh, work out or get an idea of the composition of the exhaust um, if you know um, how much excess air 
you've got. So I'm just going to illustrate this with a um, simple example. So, it, um, for example, you might want to know or be able to predict the concentrations. So let's say we've got 10% um, excess air, and that's burnt with our propane. So we're using the same example um, as we did in, on the previous slides. So 10% excess air is burnt with propane. Then what is the expected oxygen concentration by volume in the dry exhaust? Okay, so the percentage of O2 in the exhaust is the moles of um, oxygen um, over the total number of moles in the exhaust. So the number of moles of O2 is uh, 5x minus 1, so that goes on the top. And the number of moles in the exhaust is 3. Remember, it's a dry exhaust, so we're not including the water. Um, 5x, um, 79 over 21 from the, from the nitrogen, and then 5x minus 1 from the oxygen. So that's what we've got. Now, we know what x is because um, we've said we're burning the propane with 10% excess air. So um, it's 1.1. Okay, so we can put that in here. So... Um, we put that into our equation and then simply can just work this out and if you do all that you should get um, percentage of O2 as 2.1%. Um, so as I say you can do it both ways. You can either work out um, the amount of excess air from knowing something in the exhaust or you can work out the predicted emissions in your exhaust from uh, the amount of excess air that you have in your combustion system.